All right, welcome back, guys. So we just concluded a very eventful end of the chapter three, end of chapter three last week. Now we're starting the beginning of chapter four. So let's get into it. The courageous. These are the new store students. Little Captain Arseed. Currently passing over the Isengard range on the west. We are expected to reach the capital airspace at 1410 on schedule. Maintain course and speed. Arriving at Ulster, plot a course parallel to the railway line. Yes, Captain! お疲れ様です。この一週間、本当にお世話になりました。You've been so helpful this past week. Nope. This is part of the duty of the Crimson Wings. On the other hand, I am impressed with the results of the first ex exercise in North Embryo. Good work. <laughs> to be honest, I am at a loss to how to evaluate and criticize them. I suppose that is a result of your training by Craig. In any case, we must continue to show our conviction even more now. As long as we do... Cedric. Cadet Arnor. Good day, Your Majesty. As expected of the Crimson Wings. The main gun that was hardly used during the Civil War is impressive as well. From now on, it may become necessary to deploy several of those on the entire main fleet. Indeed, it could be a useful force if, ne if needed. If such a power becomes necessary, then what you learned during the study should prove useful. Of course. Good work, Captain Arseed. I am praying for another opportunity to meet. And I am counting on you and my brother for patrol during the Solstice Festival in the capital.
You're back in Heimdall. Let's go around on these parts. Times has this been? There's no end to it. Maybe we really ought to ask for help from the RMP and the intelligence division. Boy, if that's all they've got, this will be easy. We cannot be captured here. Prepare to deploy the Lambda as planned. Resuming the mission. A red flower? There really is no end to this. Oh, there she is. What will become the eye of the divine spirit that can cause miracles? The illusion is swallowed by flame, and the empire is enveloped in a fairy tale. So then, as an expert in this field, how do you intend to intervene? Oh, you caught me. To be honest, I'm struggling to even know where to start. I was wondering if we could maybe trade information. If you'd like, I'd be willing to help out you and your leader. That reminds me, it seems you've gotten engaged in a pact. Well, allow me to consider that. Please do treat me well though, former history professor at... Thor's main campus? Or should I call you... The Second Dominion, Thomas Lysander. Last time we saw this place, Gilith Osborne got shot. A smellless garden.
To think that Prince Oliver will be absent from the celebrations. After all that happened, it's understandable. As long as the crimson wings are protecting the skies over the capital, the people will feel at ease. Yes, but I feel bad for the prince. Cedric's attitude really hurt him. It is not like Oliver to become upset over something like that. You should know that all too well. I suppose you're right. He had just lost his mother and was taken into the royal palace. I half expected him to lash out at the maids, but... He accepted me and was happy from the bottom of his heart for Alfin and Cedric's birth. <laughs> that is his personal virtue. It seems he had made friends with people not just in the Empire, but all over the continent. Even still, even still, Cedric who used to look up to his brother so much. Pardon the intrusion. This Excellency Osborne would like an audience. Understood. Let him in. Oh. Please excuse me for intruding during your leisure time, Your Majesty, Empress Priscilla. Thank you for your hard work. She does seem displeased about the prince as I thought she would be. When it comes to this, it can't really be helped. In the first place, you and her see a different world entirely. I am aware. In any case, it seems that everything is going according to history. Yes, although the timing of the Civil War was an estimate, it is true that everything is flowing to reach that state. However, are you certain you are happy with this? Leaving everything to me? It's as I told you 14 years ago. If that was unavoidable, then first I would leave everything to you. I'm certain it will cause pain for my sons. But you are the same in that sense. Yes, you are majesty. As you wish, your majesty. Oh boy. Chapter 4, Brilliant Heimdall. The glowing Heimdall? Okay. Ooh wee. Ooh wee.
Fast forward like two weeks. It was July and summer air was in full swing and leave us near the capital. However, it was decided that starting this year, summer uniforms would no longer be allowed at Thoris and in keeping du with duty as a military academy. When not needing to distinguish between main and branch campus, only the uniform lighting was removed. The full summer heat started to frustrate the students. But a joint event between the main and branch schools was about to start. Up until last week, we have been studying history from the collapse to modern day from a bird's eye view. But this week, we'll start to cut deeper into history from the viewpoint of historical figures. First of all, the ancestor of the empire, Dracul's Rise Arner. His campaign during the War of the Lions 250 years ago marks the beginning of the modern era, modern era for the empire. The third son of Varius V, he seemed to be of ordinary skill, and he wandered around the Empire from an early age. He even spent time among the Nomads in the Nord Highlands and was, and was accepted by them. While he was in Nord, he got word of the bloody civil war taking place. He was not in line to ascend the throne, but he, could not, he couldn't ignore the plight of his fellow countrymen, so he decided to study martial arts with the Nomads. His army consisted of only 17 men, including his confidant, a man named Rorin, and others from the Nords. About a half a year later, Prince Dracos had the fateful encounter at Lagram. He met the daughter of the Countess who was leading the Iron Cavalry, Lien Senlot, a woman known as the Lance Maiden. Uh, I have a question. Is the woman you fought the other day the real saint herself? That's right, I've been wondering that too. But Leanne is more like a figure from a fairy tale. I thought Leanne was more like a legend. It is impossible for her to be the real thing, but she was definitely impressive. So what is she? Indeed, she was incredibly strong and had an aura like that of the original. But it is also possible that a member of the criminal organization, the society, is masquerading as her. Let's assume that for now. By the way, July 4th will be the 254th anniversary of the end of the prince's battle. I, just, I can't tell you the format of the questions, but expect some of the War of the Lions in the preceding time to appear. Be sure to review it thoroughly. It's a minute, but he does make it easy to understand. Well, he did learn it just last year at the main school. It seems he had rather high grades as well. Yeah, he's so dreamy with his glasses on. Homeroom. Now then, the next four days will consist of just exams for the students. The topics include regular lectures, military science, art, information technology, and combat technology. So it's a diverse set of topics, so please do your best. Don't make it sound easy. It is difficulty to master it is difficult to master everything perfectly. Well, we just have to trust that we have done enough work to do the year to not fall behind. By the way, I heard that the exam contests and schedules are the same as the main school. Will the grades be posted together as well? 
Yes, both individuals and classes will be scored together as one school. With that said, I would advise you to work extra hard. Everything out in the open. Talk about pressure. I'm feeling competitive now. I'm sure it's a rig so that the prince will get number one anyway. Well, that sounds very likely. No, not possible. Thoris was divided between nobles and commoners originally, but even the grades were measured together. I don't believe the instructors on either side would stand for such a violation. Please believe that the exams will be conducted fairly. I hope so. Well, when the exams are over, there will be a little something for you. Your free day is coming up this weekend, so go all out for the exams. And if you need help with the Imperial History or Technology, feel free to ask. The tests are all prepared. The big canvas will be taking the same tests. Well, I'm sure it will work out. Yeah, so we've used the orbital net to make sure the lecture topics match and we've collaborated a lot with the professors at the main campus on the question contents all we can do now is hope that the students have worked hard enough to pull through since the last month's exercise it, exercises it has been confirmed that all jaeger forces have pulled out of the empire and the intelligence division suspects that the society has once again pulled out of the empire as well is that right if that's true, the case. If that's truly the case, then we can relax a bit. The breather doesn't sound too bad, right? Students can go back to just being students, but for now, remain on guard. Of course, it's strictly forbi forbidden to reveal the questions to the students, but you can still help them study. Well, I'd actually prefer if you did help a bit. He seems to have had some of his edge taken off. Looks like he's finally relaxing. Well, he's always had a good sense of the mission from the beginning though. And recently it feels like he's really been thinking from the perspective of the students. All right, let's go help the students out as much as we can today. There's plenty of time left until school ends. All right, let's split up. The tests start tomorrow for four days. After that is a free day. Starting tomorrow, we have four days of exams and the free day immediately after. And then we'll go back, we'll have the briefing on the training. It's gonna be busy. Everyone is helping each other to overcome the difficult topics. How about I go around school and see if I can lend a hand? Also, the society and the black workshop. It would be good to get the principal's thoughts on both. Free time. When the key events have been seen and the action points reach there, the main story will advance. Okay, so go see Aurelia in her first office. Here. That should do it. Oh, you're wearing glasses, Principal? That's sort of unexpected. Oh yes, my eyesight is strangely strong actually. It's quite annoying to see so much detail up close and in the, di in the, in the distance. I'm able to see dust or the fibers on the paper clearly. So these are special glasses that actually reduce my eyesight to some extent. <laughs> wow. Literally everything about this person is out of the norm. Well, let's leave the exam tomorrow to the students. You must have something you want to ask me about the society? I was wondering what you thought about the news that the society and the Jaegers have all pulled out of the Empire for the time being. Of course, I won't accept that news at face value. That includes their Divine Knights 
their tests and the black workshop. Although we don't see them, there is no doubt they remain somewhere. Yes, those are my feelings as well. And the saint was the icing on the cake. In a good and a bad meaning. Huh? In a sense, the saint fought you and me with her utmost strength. But that is fundamentally as a human. What if we fought her otherwise? Well, it would be good if a person like that disappeared from the stage. If not, we will need to take heed. More you all than me. I'm very well aware. Oh, outfit. Okay, book in the next room. Root star, book in the next room. This one? Okay, so Yuna study event down the hall with the yellow sign. No matter what I do, the Empire's history baffles me. How about you, Leo? When we were in Crossbow, you knew exactly what was going on. Well, I'm fine with any history as it relates to the ocean areas, otherwise I'm pretty useless. Though I do think it's important to learn from history. I struggle to remember people's names or the Septians precisely, though. My head feels like it's starting to burst. These two seem like they're drowning studying so much of history at once. How about I help them out a little bit? Sure. You too? You guys seem like you're hard at work. Of all the people, it's the one putting us through all of this in the first place. Well, I suppose that's true. How about I help you study as an apology? Really? That's like a dream come true. Study, eh? We went over this in class recently. This was the War of the Lions in the year S947. Do you remember what the three causes were? Let me think. I believe the War of the Lions broke out originally due to a fight over, over the successors of, to the throne. I think it, that it was when Emperor Varius died at, the, at that time. That's right. The next is... The assassination of the crown prince who was supposed to become the emperor. Isn't that all though? Well, it's true that the one last bit, one la the last one is a bit confusing. The direct cause of the war breaking out. The fact that there is no war is no direct look, declaration of which of the remaining princes was to ascend to the throne. Oh, that's right. I see. Originally, the one who was to ascend the throne was the fourth Prince Orthus. This was two years before Prince Strykles entered the fight with his other men. At least when you put it in, the, in, in perspective, it's easier to understand. There's a ton to remember, but I think we'll make it. I'm rooting for you. As long as you can see the essence of the question, you should be able to find the answer. I hate to admit it, but he has really become kind of reliable. Well, how about just being honestly thankful here? Huh? In any case, I hope I was able to help. Since we have the opportunity, let's review the Prince's expedition to the North once more. After that, we conveyed the key points regarding the Prince's history to them. That's it? It's tiny. There's Toa.
Are you helping these two study? Yep. They seem uneasy about the study's of political affairs. Specifically, the changes in recent years are quite hard to grasp. The notion of abolishing the noble faction and commoner class and to pursue the new imperial eight key cities. It's like some kind of incantation. I know what you mean. Green, if you don't mind, do you want to help us a bit? It would be really useful if you could back me up as we go through it. Of course. <laughs> Three dudes on the other side. Oh, Instructor Reen. How are you studying for the tests in the classroom? We're buckling down all the subjects and helping each other out with weak points. I'm struggling with the medical part of warfare technology. I need help with survival techniques. And for me, it's physics. Let's see. So that's working out well, but no matter how hard, hard we study, we just aren't getting it. Sounds like it can help there. Help people study. Okay, so Jessica and Tina, green stars in the next room. Studying orbital arts? For now, yes. I'm helping Tina with military studies while she helps me with orbital arts. I see, it doesn't sound like you guys need me then. Well, actually, about the orbital AED that we learned about recently, would you mind giving us a bit more detail? I'm not sure I'm confident enough to use it myself yet. That's true, I'd like to reassure myself about that as well. Okay. Go find Valerie on the roof of the school building. What are you doing in a place like this? What do you mean? Well, just that I figured you'd be studying for the test. Everyone is gathered in groups teaching other, each other the concepts. Is there a reason not to do the same thing as everyone else? The purpose of these periodic exams is to test academic ability. I don't really see the purpose of cramming in the night before. It may be true, but... Valerie seems to be opening up herself up more recently. But the cynical side of her personality is here as usual. Oh, you're in the light music club, aren't you? How's your club doing recently? This response. Is there some kind of trouble in the club recently? Even if there was, what would I have to do with you, Instructor Schwarzer? It would be great if you'd stop trying to meddle me. If you'd stop trying to meddle. In any case, I don't have anything I want to talk with about with you, Instructor. I see. Okay, so talk to Pablo in the cafeteria. Pablo, got a sec. Okay, well, thank you, well, Valerie. Did somebody have an light music club recently? About that, I actually had a big fight with Valerie recently. Even ever since then, she won't say a word to me. Let's see, what was the fight about? The start of it was when I asked her to do vocals. Vocals? Yeah, I've never seen her sing before properly, but I've heard her sing in secret quite a few times. And well, she had a pretty nice voice, so I thought I'd ask her to sing instead of me for once. But she insisted she'd never do it no matter how much I asked. I got kind of pissed about it, so it turned into a fight. So that's what happened. Well, Valerie doesn't want to stand out at her personality. But I was thinking it was such a waste of that talent she has. Afterwards, I realized that I totally overreacted. I'd really like her back to her normal self. Makes sense. For now, I'll try talking to her once more. Wait for a bit, yeah? Gustav. So it's these three.
more helping studying. I can't really concentrate well though, but I bet I do a lot better with you helping me, instructor. Can you enter seriously for once? Well, I have some time. Want me to help you out? Sounds lovely. Thanks a bunch. <clears throat> Even so, looking at your notebooks, it doesn't look like you guys really need me. Although you have a few careless mistakes in your notebook, Tatiana. Both of us have a bit of trouble understanding the concepts we've learned recently, specifically the effects of trajectory on a munition flanked in the air. So basically, the tra trajectory deflects based on the bullet's rotation and air resistance. So, Inspector Michael already taught you that much. For some reason, it just won't sink in my head. I'd really love some help with the axis rotation law. Uh, so this is actually pretty difficult even for me, but. As the bullet rotates, the air resistance produces a force that is added to its trajectory vector, creating a deviation in the direction. To be more specific, when the bullet curves to the left, the devi deviation is left, and when it curves to the right, the deviation is to the right. You really need to practice this to practically fully, to practically to fully get it. To be honest, this really isn't my field anyway. a small amount. Gustav. How can I help you, Instructor? Well, actually, I wanted to ask you about Valerie. I heard that she had a big fight with Pablo recently. I actually wasn't there to see it, but yeah, that seems to be what happened. And ever since then, Valerie hasn't been coming to practice. I was always worried about. I was always worried something like this would happen. Why is that now? Well, Valley's personality is fundamentally against standing out. Although I feel that the cause of it is not her own disposition, but her circumstances. I think Valerie was brought up very well. She has the same sort of typical habits and mannerisms as Muse and Tatiana. I feel the same from her. I believe there are a lot of people like that in North Ambria, so her dismissive personality may have come from her surroundings. Alright, this is just my own personal opinion. Okay, okay. Back to Valerie. Instructor Schwarzer, do you need something else with me? Yeah, I want to talk to Pablo and Gustav. I'd really like for you to make up with Pablo. You really are so nosy, Instructor. Well, if it was just a normal fight, I wouldn't say anything, but... It's just that you seem like you just can't take it, Valerie. Can't take it? You might deny this, but don't you really want to take the vocal part more than anyone? That's not... Sorry if I'm butting in, but... Was your family originally nobility? What difference does that make? I just figured that if I understood your circumstances a little better, if you were... Well, your intuition isn't wrong. That was back when North Ambria was still ruled as, as a duchy. Even though the system was mostly disbanded when it became an autonomous state, the classes still persisted to some extent. As a child born to a happy family in a noble house, of course I was the subject of jealousy and anger. I had a horrible experience, but that's a secret. Actually, my family line traces the former Grand Duke Balmuth. 
the former Grand Duke? Of course, you know the story as a history, as a professor of history. He betrayed the people during the calamity 28 years ago and fled the state. This way, being connected to that family, my own family was called the House of Devils. I never did intend to discuss this incident. It's in the past now. Devil might just be an apt description of me, after all. You shouldn't bother with, any more, with me anymore, Instructor. Valerie, why don't you tell us about this before? I said all the stuff, all sell that stuff to you, and I didn't know the truth at all. How long have you two been here? There? Sorry, pretty much all along. Pablo and I were really concerned. The school is full of people who can't mind their own business. But well, it is what it is. I'll tell you two as well. Nothing good will come of me, come of associating with me. Don't say such stupid things, huh? After that, even I am a bit offended now. Why should we even care about being called the House of the Devils? It doesn't ma matter in the chain in the language of rock. Actually, it's more of a weapon, isn't it? When we play rock music, the demons from our past don't matter. So just throw away all those feelings. I feel like it's time for a music session now. How about you show me a little performance in the music room? That's not a bad idea, Instructor Reed. Alright, already, I get it. Man, you guys are desperate. You won't get anything from me by praising me, you know. Great! It's better than I thought. You guys sounded like pros. I can embarrass you for something like this. You're way better than me at singing anyway. So I'll be counting on you to back me up with vocals from now on. No objections, Valerie? Well, I guess if you ask that much. I guess I'm totally exposed now. Then you better just rely on us now. Cool. Out of curiosity, let me see. I want to see if I can buy anything from that store real quick. Is anything of value or interest even? Tina is over by the garden. Is that it? Wait, hang on. Basically, all right. So, uh, I guess I'll speak with uh, Altina. Sure. Out of curiosity. No. Better with the coat on. Lloyd? Lloyd Hare? Is that... Okay. What are y'all doing here? 
Altina and Louise, you're studying in a place like this? Well, yes, we're reviewing art history and music here. After all, there seems to be listening test on one of those days. So you wanted to listen out here so we couldn't, so we wouldn't bother anyone else. I see. But art is so esoteric. The abstract problems can't be easily solved just with knowledge. Well, I'm much better at this kind of problem than knowledge-based problems. So we compl complement each other well. Elchen. Well, I suppose. Oops. Well, I'm not good at music, but I can help you guys out if you'd like. How about we study together a bit? So are you worried about the listening test? I have a hard time even predicting what kind of questions they might ask, but I've been listening to all sorts of sounds and melodies to prepare, but... I have no problem with the musical form, the tempo, or song titles. But in past years, they also asked about the impression the song leaves on you. I have no idea of, about that aspect, so I was listening to lots of songs with, with Louise trying to derive the impression. I think that's the exact opposite of the intent of this test, though. But wait a minute. I feel like... I feel that we can assume that this principle would do that. Do what exactly? I think there's a good chance you'll prepare questions that can't be solved just by memorizing. So in that sense, I think it's important that you learn how to approach the questions using your own feeling. So, what specifically do I do? Well, I think it would be good to listen to all sorts of types of music and form your own impression about each. But you can't just use Louise's answer, you need to think of your own. I'll help you out too, and you might get the hang of it after you go through a couple of them. It might be worth a try. Thank you, Instructor Bean. Let's see. Okay. That's all right. Dr. Schmidt. So these must be the remnants of that white divine knight. Yes, I was able to get a good haul of the parts. Much better than what I was able to scrounge up in Sutherland or Crossbell. To be honest, the analysis this time will take a while. Wow, that much. I heard they moved those railway guns using some kind of spatial lapse, a really terrifying technique. It's probably the culmination of the society's research on the Gord Gordius class. I heard that they had a breakthrough in that technology two years ago. Perhaps I should re-examine their progress. By the way, I fixed your longsword. Give it a feel and make sure it's right. Did you really? Thanks a lot, Professor. I really thought we weren't going to be able to pull it off then. We were all able to hold out against that blade, but it almost felt like it was using some kind of spiritual power. After all, by using, making use of your feedback through your connection with the Divine Knight, you were able to quite literally sharpen your sword. And the same thing is repeatable, so you don't have to worry about the details. Is that right? Well, thanks a lot. After checking in on the students, Reen returned to the office one more time to make sure the test materials were ready. After locking the door, he started heading back home. Hmm. 
Well, good thing I brought my umbrella. Not that it's too heavy. The students should have gone home already, so I should too. Toa. I'll get under the umbrella for now. Either you take this umbrella yourself or we go home together. No fair putting it that way. Well then, I guess I'll take you up on that, but... Don't let your shoulder get wet because you're being considerate of me, okay? It'll be fine. Senpai is... What could you be trying to say, I wonder? Sorry, if it was Aldrin, he'd have been, he would have been much more straightforward and frank. The way you made me an offer, I couldn't refuse choice. You've become an adult and not in a good way. Sorry. But knowing you, I'm sure you lent your umbrella to a student, right? Saying something like, oh, don't worry, I have a spare. Were you watching me? No, it's just that you'd never forget to bring an umbrella. Although I guess it is a bit more believable since the rain was unexpected. Alright, you're forbid forbidden from trying to read into me any further. You're only 20, you should be less cunning and more innocent. Even though I'm your co-worker, I am one year older. Roger that. But since so much has happened, Trinity, I think I've passed you somehow. Huh? Sorry, never mind. Shall we get going then? Or did you still have something to do here? No, I'm ready to head home. The politics and ethics class were given by Professor Heinrich at the main school, right? Right, and since it was his specialty, he gave me a lot of help with it. You were best in history and military technology, right, Rain? Yes, and Instructor Beatrix was my mentor in that area. Sounds like she's had a rough time of it. And Principal Van Dyke and the Instructor Thomas have both retired as well. Although it does seem that Instructors Markov and Mary are both doing their best still. That's kind of nostalgic. We also had Instructor Sarah and Instructor Nightheart two years ago as well. That's right. It seems like the government's policy is intent on strengthening military power, not just listening anymore. Even still, it's encouraging to know that at least some of our former instructors are still doing the best they can. That's right. We have to do our best too. After all, Angie and George are both back in the Empire. That's true. Both of them should be in Aurora about now. They should be. They must be busy though. I can't get a hold of either of them. But they're so lucky. I'm kind of jealous that they can both express their feelings with each other like that. Uh... Well, Angelica swings the other way, doesn't she? Although I guess they were dancing together that night after the, after the school festival. Well, they've known each other forever, so I don't think it's like that. But a close friend of the same sex, it's a different relationship than I, that I have with her. We both have a problem, to what, but it would be a real blessing if she, never, if, if she ever decided to confide them in me. I think Crow may have been the same. That's true. He was teasing me right off the bat when I met him. That's right, I remember. The masked man, your family. You know, you don't have to think about this stuff alone, Reen, right? Reen, right? 
Of course, there's the old Class 7 and Instructor Sarah, but the new Class 7 students, I think you can confide in any of them. And of course, me too. By chance, about my real father. Yeah, somehow. It's not like I heard it from old Class 7 or, or Instructor Sarah. It was more based on something that Major Claire said that made me realize it. Is that so? It stopped. <sighs> you can see the star so clearly. I guess the clouds got blown aside by the wind all at once, huh? Thanks for listening to me. Somehow it makes me think back to two years ago. Alright, the time you went shopping. And you helped with the consultation about the school festival around that time, too. That's right. The next day, I showed you our band performance. Oh my god. Forget that I brought that up. I'm not sure I could ever really forget that. You're such a meanie, Reen. So, uh, sometime soon, will you hear me out? About my father, about what happened at the palace, about everything that happened since you graduated. I want you to know all about it. 